Poor Herod. He is one troubled man. He is imprisoned. Though he is not literally imprisoned, but in theory he is prisoned. John the Baptist is in prison, but he's free. He's free to speak the truth. He's free because he knows who he is. He knows his identity. When, they, when the scribes and Pharisees came to him and asked, Who are you? I'm a voice. Are you the Messiah? He knew who he was. He knew his place in God's plan. He knew his identity. He was a man to prepare the way. He had an intimate relationship with God. I can't imagine how much time he spent in silence. He lived in the desert. So the foundation of his very being, his DNA, was engulfed in God. That's why when he's in prison, he's a free man. And Herod was free. He is basically like a puppet. Those at the party, at the celebration, he can't say I'm wrong. I should have said that. When you're desperate, interiorly, you're a person who does desperate things. And he's very asking the daughter of Herodias, I'll even give you half of my kingdom. That's so exaggerated. It's overkill. That shows how much guilt he had. Overkill. The devil has a feast day. Feasts on Herod. He's a troubled man. John the Baptist is so centered and his DNA engulfed in God that he can accept even laying down his life. And he's strengthened. Now, St. John Paul II said that we would need in this century the faith of martyrs. And we are told in the book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1 to 6, if you have chosen to follow the Lord, accept, expect trials. One thing we can be sure of with God, He gives us what we need when we need it. That's hard, of, that's hard to swallow when you're on trial. But once the moment comes when you are supposed to step up to that, so to speak, and face what you and I have to, he is very faithful. Not getting this, in this too for long, I think it's telling this. Having been someone who has been kidnapped and almost executed, I can tell you for sure, he puts his money where his mouth is. He is faithful beyond what we even need. So, it's important to discover that because God, when He builds, when He prepares us for whatever it is in our life, He does brick by brick, by brick, by brick, by brick. So, what is it in our life that we need, and, and I repeat this like a scratch record, to recover peace? What seems to be overwhelming me in my life that obviously is not something like what John the Baptist went through. But it is there that God wants to show us He's really worthy of our trust. He is trustworthy. And the only one that can give in my trust and your trust is ourselves. I can't do it for you and you can't do it for me. So whenever we're facing something, whatever it is that's shaking our cage, so we won't fall into desperation and overreact. Herod overreacted, overkill beyond. We need to learn that lesson on a day-to-day -day world, day-to-day -day, uh, process. Now, God, and this is just the way He works, He has to make us children. We don't understand that. We want to be in control. But God has to make us children. And I don't know what methods He's using, but just know this. He knows what he's doing. If a particular sin will allow you to discover that he is God and you and I are not, he'll allow that sin to persist. If it brings you to prayer, 
Bravo, bravo. God knows what he's doing. Now, as long as we don't choose it coldly, meaning that I plan it. St. Teresa of Avila said that there are sins and there are sins. There are sins that we fall by weakness. Those are not obstacles to God. But the ones that we plan, we premeditate, and we choose freely, those are the obstacles. So whenever God is allowing whatever, whether it be John the Baptist, he had already persecution to say fiat, to say fiat to what he's allowing. Because if we don't say fiat, we complain. If we don't say fiat, we murmur. If we don't say fiat, we are loud inside. So what made John the Baptist? What made John the Baptist free though he was in prison? He knew who he was. He knew his identity. And this is the question that I have to ask. And we have to ask him. Do I know who I am? Is my identity based on what I do and don't do? Or is it based on what he's done already? He created me without me. He died on the cross for me and forgave me before I even committed my first sin. Before I even existed. That's how good his infinite tsunami of grace and mercy has been being poured out in my direction. Even before I existed. So who am I going to focus on? The one who's perfect at what he does? Being God. Being merciful. Wanting to get peace. Wanting to get the grace to face what we're facing. Or you and I who stumble around the world. We stumble. We fall, we get up. We fall, we get up. The main thing eventually is to take his action very seriously. And my action, yeah. Look what it says in Judas chapter 9, verse 11. Speaking about the power of God. For the power, for thy power, this is Judas speaking, for thy power does not depend on numbers, nor thy might upon men of strength. For thou art God of the lowly, helper of the oppressed, Upholder of the weak, protector of the forlorn, savior of those without hope. So John spent a lot of time in silence. I can guarantee you he didn't baptize 24 hours a day. But he did spend a lot of time in silence in the desert. That means that that silence that he faced, God, who knows how long it was, became presence of God. That's what we need to be engulfed in and overwhelmed in. It speaks about Jesus, his first cousin, that Jesus who came from the bosom of the Father, John 1.18. That's a symbolism of he was living, breathing, existing in the infinite love of his father as son. He, that was his identity. He is son, his favorite son, his only begotten eternal son. And he lived from and went back to that bosom of daddy. That's where it's safe. That's where we will get the grace to live daily, his will, and if he does will. And I want you to know, Sometimes I give communion to people, and I hear in my heart, as I'm giving Jesus to the person, pray for him, he will be a martyr. So the Lord has chosen some of us, and I know someone who has seen his martyrdom. He saw himself how he died. I know, enough, I know of another one, I don't know this person per se, and I know of priests, I give a lot of priests to priests, some of them, I'm looking at them, and I move deeply because I have a sense they will be martyrs. But just know this, it's the daily steps that brick by brick that prepares us for the final fiat. In Jesus' name.